Thank you so much for joining me here today for the online tour of the exhibition, The Day Before the Fall, which is now open in Sao Paulo until the 6th of June. I'm Clarissa Da, and I have curated The Day Before the Fall with support of Apex Art. It has been a journey and I'm very, very thankful to everyone, especially Elizabeth Larison for the kindness and patience. Uh, it was a pleasure working with you guys and I highly recommend anyone writing a proposal. So this, can you hear me well? Yeah, okay. So this proposal uh, was sent in the beginning of 2019. It was a bit after the last national elections in Brazil, a time when I, uh, a lot had happened and I personally it was feeling quite devastated. Uh, it was like this dreadful anticipation of knowing that something terrible was about to come. And, and I remember during the elections, a woman was murdered in the streets here, a transgender woman, a travesti. She was stabbed to death in Lago do Aroshi here in Sao Paulo. And during the attack, the murder was uh, shouting uh, the candidate to take the president's name. So I, I saw that as a kind of a foreshow, like an announcement of something that was already in course, but would then become even more evident, even more clear and even more cruel. And at the same time, you could sense in the art scene or political scene, as well as in the streets, that transgender people were rising in a way, uh, supported by a very strong community, trans, but uh, also indigenous, queer people of color, and others that find a place and really use the energy to uplift and support this community. So I feel that what is growing here right now, what is growing here is powerful and revolutionary even. And the proposal was done to commission uh, six installations, so open a temporary independent art space with six installations from artists who are travestis and live in the city installations that spoke to remaining alive, knowing that trans people will continue to exist in the future, of course, as always, but at the same time, inhabiting a present, this present, which is full of mourning and pain and violence and exploitation. So how could we prepare and transform and imagine a future which is not the one materializing right now? And the poem that gives name to the exhibition is Our Enemy Says by Bertolt Brecht. It's in the exhibition text, if you guys want to check it later. And it says, uh, they say the fight has ended and it has begun. They say the truth was destroyed, but we still know it and we still spread it. So it's the eve, it's the preparation, it's the study. It's the day before the fall of our enemies. So I, I like this certainty and I feel this certainty. And at the same time, it's a way to consider the present moment like a time of strengthening and healing and coming together to escape and defeat what's in front of us. And this neighborhood here, downtown Sao Paulo was central to the proposal. It's a neighborhood where the trans community is visible and active. The crime, the murder that I just mentioned happened at the exact same place where the trans pride parade lives from. So it's a place uh, filled, like charged with many memories, uh, history. So it was thus to create possibilities grounded here while also making this exhibition a space of encounter. And we were going to open, like Evie said, in April, 2020, and right before the pandemic. And the initial, the original idea was to 
fill the space with events and gather as many people as possible. And of course, Brazil being the center of the pandemic and disaster all over made it impossible. However, I'm so glad that we could eventually make this into an in-person exhibition and have these encounters, not as we imagine them, but existing anyway. Uh, let me days, just take a moment before starting talking about the artworks to say that I stand here in solidarity with Palestinian people and that we must demand the end of the ethnic cleansing and the Israeli apartheid. Okay, let's start then. Let's start the tour. Uh, so I first, the artist, every artist or the artist, they decided what they would do after I show them the proposal. And also we're gonna have interviews with the artists available next week. If you guys want to check it later, it's nice. So as we enter here, we find Anna Messi's Strange Distortions by Lucifer Eclipse. So she described this installation as looking back at her childhood. So it's about desire, about maybe about realizing that what you desire is not available for you and having others' desires projected onto you. Also about how memory unfolds and trauma mutates and gives way to something new. So first there's the cloud, this plush cloud that we cross uh, with huge nails that are like interferences. And this cloud is like a door to her imaginary. So after we enter, we find the bodiless teddy bear uh, who seems to be forming or changing form. And over the drowned body, this like draft of a body that is a hanging mobile with hormones. Yes, this. And on the other side, we have the breast flower. It's not an official name, but I've been calling it away. And I think it reminds me of a character of a video game, or maybe an actual flower from another planet. Eclipse works mainly digitally. And I think this reminds me of a digital dimension. And it's also the first time that she's working with this material sewing. So I really like how it turned out. I think it gives this entrance something like a cute yet uh, uncanny vibe. So as we keep going, um, a moment. So we're gonna find to the left, uh, the installation called So Far So Close by Anna Highlander Marxist dos Anjos. So what we have here are three bathroom doors from a bar of the center of Sao Paulo. And above it, three signs with coordinates to the location of the bar. So Anna Highlander Matis researches bar bathroom doors for a long time. And bars that she describes as pages that gather and layer different desires like urgencies and cravings, whether sexual or political, like this urge to make a mark, right? This mark of your presence. And for her, the tension between the public and the private can be felt here in the motivation of sentences and dialogues created by this constant coming and going. And these doors for me are like portals to something that vibrates in the passageway, something that vibrates on the border. And they also a space of pain, of course. We know that public bathrooms are frequent spaces of violence and transphobia. And you can also feel that in the doors that is sometimes this passes like mask for mask. And the bar that she got the doors from is like a small bar, corner bar, that sometimes gathers an LGBT crowd at night 
although not intentionally. And before the pandemic, I've been to this bar many times, I like open and close these doors and seeing them removed and exhibited here impressed me in a different way. Like usually I don't pay much attention, just like written doors and Sao Paulo has like name tagging everywhere. But now I can actually make sense of how many voices and how many names are layered here. So Anna Helene Marti is usually seeks to establish a dialogue between collective and personal history in her work, a practice that she calls a choir. She has created singing choirs before. And like knowing that, I think they remind me of a choir, like a silent lost choir. And also really Sao Paulo for me, like uh, the city here is so big, there's so many people and yet maybe it's a cliche to say that, but it's so lonely. And now more than ever, places have closed down. I mean, places are always closing down here. The city has a very short memory and everything is always for sale. So if you like somewhere, if you cherish memories of a place, you must try to think of ways to hold this memory and remember this place, make a mark before the city tries to erase it as soon as possible. And on the other side, in front of the doors, there's a video that we recorded here before installation. It's a readings video. It's an alternative to the reading night that we had planned before. Also a way to invite others to collaborate and have other voices echoing in the space. So there are six readings and each of the reading is dedicated to un one of the installations. And now I see like all oh, the, oh, the, uh, the, yeah, that. <laughs> anyway, so it, the texts were chosen by me, Pedra Costa and Maria Clara Raujo. They're an average of six to eight minutes long. So they're quite long texts, different, read by also amazing artists and writers. Some are from uh, trans-Brazilian writers, such as Maria, Rafa Maria Rafaela Silva, Maria Clara Araújo, Abigail Campos Leal, Claudia Wonder, and a text by Matheusa Passarelli who also passed away really brutally a few years ago. Also attacks by Audrey Lord, by Leopold von Zagamazor, and Nigerian scholar Oyelonki Oyeyumi. So very different vibes, a bit for each taste, and a beautiful editing by Shi Zenera, which is an audiovisual producer by transmasculine filmmakers. So take a look afterwards, all texts are subtitled. Okay, I think we can go up now, uh, up and up. Okay, we are uh, arriving. So what we have in front of us that we are going to approach is a transvision installation by Trans Alien. So the installation is composed by a 3D panel, ground, and two objects functioning as masks. So looking through each of the object, each of the masks, you'll see a different image. So first the, the panel. So the image on the foreground, the one that is more visible with the group, was taken as part of a project by Atelier Transmoras, a project titled Brazil, the World Champion of Travestis. So I think the inversion created here is very intriguing for me because in the last years, We've heard so many times that Brazil is the country that most kills transgender people, like the highest number of hate attacks 
And I think projects such as this reverse this logic. It's a very subtle way to go from narrating trauma and expecting other people's empathy to turn inwards to the community to celebrate life and those alive around you and refuse what, you, what is expected, which is that. And the green and yellow colors, because it's not so visible, but they're wearing Brazilian t-shirts. And I think this is also uh, taking back a reclaiming because the national t-shirt, the green and yellow colors, have become a synonym in the past years of this nationalist, conservative, and even insane people. So for example, if I'm walking down the street and I spot a green and yellow t-shirt, I most certainly like cross the street immediately to spare me from this encounter. I fear, I really fear these people. So I think seeing the shirts use it here, it's refreshing for me. Like being able to look at these colors with affection again, it's refreshing. And on the background, uh, looking through the black and white mask, you see the Brazilian flag burning. Uh, through the 3D, it seems like it's on the floor, flames a bit ragged. So I think it's a very honest picture of this moment. So Trans Alien is an artist and member of the Marsha Collective as well as a uh, name after Marsha P. Johnson, and as well as other collectives, very active, great organizer and creator. And Transali is well known for her use of masks. She uses, uh, she makes and wears them constantly. I remember the first time I ever saw her, like at a party or somewhere years ago, and kind of realizing instantly that I was in front of something very genuine, that she, through her mask, was communicating more than a face could, that she was revealing something intimate, personal, and yet obstructing at the same time this invasive gaze. And I feel in transvision, the mask, the masks play a similar role. They reveal you something and they change your perception if you get close enough to see it. And for here, I think we can go to, to Scorpionics, Bruna Curi's installation, uh, right in the back. So Bruna Curi is a key figure in the underground performance scene in Brazil. It's crazy actually, because last month she was gathering all academic work published about her. And it's so much, it's really a lot of stuff. And at the same time, she's completely absent from any institution, public or private. And it's the first time that she's presenting objects. So what we have here in the TVs, the TVs are showing uh, videos of her performances, three videos. And the archive, they work to, the, the function is to elucidate a bit of the process she goes through until arriving at the dildo knife, which is exhibited in the glass box, yes, on the wall. So the dildo knife, it's an object that she describes as a weapon of counterattack, a way of creating cutting assholes that no longer will endure violence passively. I love that. And the performances that uh, are showing are different. In one, she's introducing the object herself while another person burns pictures and symbols. It's a public act without audience. And the other two happen in front of an audience. In one, the Anna Porno Terrorista introduces the object and then leaves Kuri alone to perform. 
And in the last one, Ventura Profana, who is an also a great artist in Brazil, introduces the object and then they perform together and remain together until the end when they hug. So although the object is more or less the same, each of the performance makes me feel something very distinctive and I feel it touches a different point. Um, the glass box with the judo knife, sorry, I'm always like coming and going. So the glass box with the judo knife, as you see, it's filled with cockroaches. Uh, the way this is presenting these objects, like surrounded by dirt and cockroaches, also are a sign of her discomfort in entering the gallery, like inhabiting the art space, it's like unsure of what will be made of her work or her even in the setting, which is a very real, honest concern. And next to it, there's a panel illustrating the Dildo knife process. And then we have the Bible, which is a new object. Uh, so the Bible is a Bible with a dildo inside and a matter of wax that seems to be falling from it. Uh, I, I don't feel the need to explain so much. I think sometimes less is more, right? But maybe just a quick fact, like talking about trans aliens work and Dunakuri, is that the slogan of this government right now that we live under, the slogan two sentences repeated and spread everywhere is Brazil above everything and God above everyone whatever that means, right? So I feel Bruna Kuri's work is not comfortable to watch, but it sticks with you for a long time. And I feel it makes you realize things about yourself and others. I feel her work, like Asiel Vitorino's, is about unknowability and maybe about knowing and owning your place of power and choosing your weapons accordingly and i'm really looking forward to see what she does next so as we continue we go to intercession yes uh, by vulcanica pocahopa so vulcanica pocahopa is also an artist that cre who creates across different media, like uh, paintings, performance, circles, video making, like you name it, honey, she does it all. Uh, the first time I saw her work, it was Disacuenda, which is a series of videos in which she interviews people from artists from the trans community. And then last year, a series of pictures uh, of paintings by her circulated a lot. Uh, paintings that she de were depicting trans people murdering white men, some of them very familiar to us. And for this exhibition, she went on exploring sculpting. I really, really like this author comprising paintings and sculptures made from found objects, dolls, and religious images that she modifies. There are also feathers, bones, organic material. She said it was important to incorporate nature into an altar dedicated to trans existences that are so many times deemed as unnatural. Vulcanica Pocahopa was raised Catholic and did missionary work in her teenage years until she eventually withdrew from church. And she described her initial inspiration from, for, this, for this work as the altars uh, present in grandmother's houses. And I feel it retains, it carries this power of faith. 
while also challenging the binaries like good and bad, sacred and profane. And I, I feel it's a very loving installation. There's so many names and messages, friends portrayed and also archetypes. And still there's this energy of war, this energy of combat, which is so visible and present on her previous works. And what else? Mm, I think the images also, they're likewise, like the they images that are cutting and bleeding, but so tender, they're like a, sanctified yet dangerous and i like that as i said i said in the exhibition text that i think it testifies for the sacredness of the community for the ancestors and for a history that's constantly erased but also a testimony and also dedicated to the ones alive right now as Vulcanica Pocahopa describes her documentation of people she knows as coming from the fear of losing them, coming from the fear of losing the registers of them speaking for themselves, creating with the fear that your own work will be suddenly interrupted by violence. Uh, so like always this feeling of immediacy that surrounds precariousness. Uh, okay, as we cross, I think we can cross to the other side. It's so silent. Um, so as we cross, we'll find Cassiel Vitorino Brasileiros. Who are you to lay on my bed? So Cassiel Vitorino is a psychologist and artist who in the last year accepted a lot in Brazil and internationally. Uh, I feel it's a very powerful, uh, beautiful and clearly driven work, uh, grounded in travesti spirituality, which is a collective rooting into the earth that blurs temporalities, and produces health. Cassia Vitorino also writes beautifully, and I really recommend researching more, reading her. And I think Cassia Vitorino has a very particular rhythm, like a movement. I always feel that it's like a movement that feels like a dance. It's like a to and fro between opposites, not opposites, but seeming opposites. She moves between like remembering, forgetting, remembering, or life, death, life. And I feel through this movement, the body becomes a site of memory and a site for the production of knowledge. I think she says that uh, for a travesty black body to wander through life, for them to be able to keep wandering, transforming, and escaping, they must be bodily savvy. So I feel the movement, it also uh, works to create this sharpness of the body. Cassiel Vitorino's work has central concepts such as transmutation, inhabiting the crossings and the unpredictable, and healing and escaping through macumbaria. So she's a macumbeira, she practices macumba, which is an Afro Brazilian religious practice. So, who are you to lay on my bed? This sentence is a verse from a song, a chant actually sang to Pomba Giras, who are feminine, connected to Macumba as well, uh, are feminine entities who in life defied and resisted 
sexist colonial violence. Cassia Vittorino told me that this work changed, transformed after she recently suffered an episode of violence. So the violence, this well-known familiar violence destined to the feminine, especially to disobedient dissident feminine bodies. So she described this soul and earth around the bed as a labyrinth. And in the middle, she's doing a ritual of grounding, balancing and nurturing the body. So I feel this movement here created by two forms of protection in place so as to create what she describes as a perishable space of freedom. I think Cassio Vittorino has an incredible power of redirecting and transforming energy that can be very potent for the people that she intends to reach, if she can reach them. Uh, and there is one particular writing of her that I like, in which she says that she welcomes life and death, but refuses annihilation. So annihilation, in my perception, is when life is drained out of you, like stolen and exploited. So refusing annihilation then is at the core of surviving. It's a, a collective movement that demands this very acute perception of life and everything surrounding life. And demands also the courage to move through unpredictable grounds and to desire something that is not being offered and will never be offered, it must be taken. And so I feel there are two directions at which this exhibition aims at. And one is create like imagining ways of living with freedom, plotting for freedom, Realizing that we can still dream of freedom, that we don't have to dream of success, we can dream of freedom. And the other is creating weapons, weapons really, for protection. Protection against those men who wish to destroy and annihilate all forms of life, but they won't. So, I think, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening.